Hey everybody, I know it's been a, a hot minute, as tends to happen, but uh, I wanted to make this quick video. Now this is not a, this is not a, uh, uh, my 2000 subscriber thank you video, although I really, really do appreciate that. I am very excited to make something, uh, to thank everybody for that. And it is coming, trust me, it's gonna be really awesome, or at least I hope it will be. But I wanted to make a quick video talking about a new Kickstarter campaign that has recently popped up. Now, this is not a paid promotion. I am just doing this because I want to. Keizo Murase is a legendary figure in tokusatsu, in the kaiju genre. And a lot of you most likely have become familiar with him in recent years because of Howl from Beyond the Fog, which is an independently produced short kaiju film soon to be released uh, through SRS Cinema in the United States. And Murase-san was a the chief, basically he, he was in charge of the monster suit of creating the monster suit for that film. And that was largely what the Kickstarter was about. It was about getting the funds together for Morase-san to be able to oversee the production of an elaborate new monster costume. In fact, those of you who have been with my channel for a long time have probably seen the video of me stomping around in the Nebra suit. Uh, so that film's coming out soon. Morase-san worked on that monster suit, but he also is very well known for making Varan, or rather he was the suit maker who designed the final suit for Varan. Uh, best known for creating these kind of peanut shell style textured bumps on Varan's back. Uh, this is unrelated. It's a, it's a little set of prayer beads that was given to me by a, uh, <laughs> a priest who was on the streets of Tokyo, and I gave him a couple of yen, and he gave me a little beaded uh, thingy. So I gave this to Varan, because Varan has all these ties to Japanese uh, mountain folklore and all that. Uh, that being said, Murase-san has, has worked extensively on many kaiju films. He's, he's, a, he's a legend in the genre. Uh, Sato-san, Daisuke Sato, the director of photography for... Well, the director and creator of How From Beyond the Fog is a student of his, and the two of them became uh, really great friends for me in the last couple of years, which is really saying something because Murase-san is not a young man anymore. He is he's up there in his 80s and uh, with the success of the How From Beyond the Fog Kickstarter uh, Santo-san and Murase-san and their team want to move forward with a film concept called Brush of the God which is, a, is, a, is the English version of their title but it is Basically, what it, from what it looks like, it's going to be a kaiju fantasy film with monsters and there's going to be all this tokusatsu, this Japanese special effects. One of the reasons why I wanted to talk about it a little more extensively here is because it's no secret that tokusatsu, the art of Japanese live action effects work, this, this art of creating a reality uh, out of... Basically, you're, you're creating... Its, it creates its own reality out of physical materials. It's it's physically there, you can touch it. And not necessarily being married to the concept of realism, these notions are kind of dying off in Japan. Uh, I mean, Godzilla basically has made this transition to these big budget CGI productions. Um, Super Sentai has been struggling for a while. Common Rider, while they do have elements of tokusatsu, they don't have doesn't have it doesn't have that that pure like we're going to create this reality out of miniature buildings and props and monster suits and heroes and stuff the same way that like a traditional kaiju story does. Or um, and I'm not poo pooing. 
Kamen Rider. I love Kamen Rider. But then you've got Ultraman, and Ultraman is in a lot of ways the last holdout, and while the shows and the annual films still use these classic tokusatsu techniques, with Shin Ultraman on the horizon, which is largely going to feature CGI effects, it's an unfortunate reality that there's there's a real concern that eventually Ultraman will fall prey to this too. Uh, to this, to these modern notions of CGI kind of taking everything over, which is, uh, CGI has its place and it's been used to great effect, even in tokusatsu. There's no question about that. But I'm loath to see this art form disappear altogether. So, seeing a production like this, a Kickstarter production, where it looks like it's going to be a ground up top bottom to top top to bottom tokusatsu fantasy with like oversized uh props and monsters and giant uh mythological f figures that to me is really genuinely exciting and sato and marase already blew me out of the water with how for me on the fog which <laughs> no small uh, it's also no secret that I did a piece of art for Hal from Beyond the Fog that was just fan art. It was just something I wanted to do for fun, just to help promote the, the film. And Sato wound up adopting it as official art for the production, which is genuinely very heartwarming for me. And it's even going to be used uh, for the American release alongside uh, an amazing cover by uh, Matsumoto Sensei, who, who just did this beautiful poster for the film. Anywho, I highly, highly, highly encourage everyone who really loves tokusatsu to go and uh, pledge to this production. It's on Kickstarter. I'm going to put it down in the description, down there somewhere. Uh, please go check it out. Uh, try to donate if you can. I know there's a lot going on in the world right now. The world is, is we're really dealing with a lot right now. But... Well, there's this, there's this inclination to say, well, you know, especially for artists, artists feel this too, this kind of imposter syndrome where in the face of all of these things happening around us, it's hard to feel like what we're doing matters and what we do is important. But the fact is that what we do is important and does matter. And I mean, I, I recently talked to a friend who... I she admitted to me that there was a period in her life where when I was working on Godzilla Rulers of Earth for IDW and it was being put out every month she told me about how that was the one bright spot in her life the like she said that was the one thing keeping her going with everything else going on in her life and it really that deeply affected me and reminded me that what what we as artists do matter on some level, whether it's escapism or we're trying to make a statement about something, art is one of those things that gives spice to life, no matter what this voice in our heads may tell us, oh, well, once the world goes up, all art will cease to matter, art will cease to exist, cease to be important, and I just don't think that's ever going to be true. Uh, I mean, I, I have to convince myself of that, I have to convince myself of that along with a lot of artists. and. What Marase-san and Sato-san and Ishikawa-san and Kaida-san and these other artists working on this film want to do is try to bring some of that art and keep some of that art alive, especially an art form that has been increasingly neglected over the last couple of years. So consider donating to that. It would mean a lot to me. These people are my friends and their work means a lot to me because it inspired me growing up and the things I do. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, thanks so much, guys. Um, thank you again for 2,000 subscribers. Uh, it really means a lot. Video's coming soon, and 2,000 subscribers. I've just been, I've been busy. We're all busy. <laughs> thanks again, and uh, hopefully uh, you guys are doing okay out there and doing well in your own endeavors. So, bye.